Hello everyone, Dallin with Haven Outside, and today I wanted to show you what a proper sports court looks like um, without doing post tension. And so we're gonna walk through things and let's get started. So the first thing you wanna decide is where you're gonna put your sports court. And so they have decided to put it here in the corner of their yard and it's going to be a 55 by 30 sports court. Next, you're gonna wanna decide what kind of hardware you want, meaning the lights and the posts and everything that you need to run underground before the concrete stands in the way of any kind of prep work needed to get those things started. So as you can see here, we have the conduit ran for the light pole, um, and it's gonna stand on this side of the sports court. And so we've got it stuffed up. We also have it dug out to accommodate for the requirements to secure it into the ground. And it's not showing this, but over here, we're gonna pull it through the basement of the house. So as you can see here, the end of the conduit's right here. We'll just add a piece, go into the basement of the house to provide lighting. Um, and this trench has to be compacted, which we've got done. Now, after you have your stakes in place, if you have to bring up your yard a lot, road base is the best for that because road base will compact really, really, really tightly and you don't want any loose ground because you'll end up cracking your concrete. And sports courts, you don't want any settling. You want as even as ground as possible forever. So that's what we've done here is we brought in the road base and we've leveled it off right here. And we're gonna do some compacting to ensure that there's no settling, no light spots, no nothing. Now you see since we've got it pretty close to the dirt, we're compacting it different locations are thicker than others and so it will take to the compaction differently in some spots than others. So we'll go over it once with the compactor and then we'll go back and fill in some lows, take off some highs if there's any and we'll move forward from there. The benefit to doing this is it adds a lot of structure to underneath the concrete so you don't have to worry about your concrete cracking or sloping off. Good step to take. Going back through and filling in the lows. Now you want to try to get your base as close as possible because it helps with the distributing of the weight. So if you have a thin spot in an area, it could possibly be weaker in that area for cracking purposes. However, it's not always the case. The things you want to pay the closest attention to are just as even as possible because money talks and the thicker your concrete pad is, the more money you're spending on concrete, the more expensive it's going to be. So this pad is going to be about five inches, which is great for a sports court, minimizing the chance of cracks or settling. Okay, so now that we've got the compacting done, we did three rounds of compacting and filling in spots. We've got the side forms up and now we're putting this water vapor barrier down. And the science behind this is this is gonna keep the moisture from underground coming up through your concrete and making the paint on your sports court flake off. So this is gonna keep the moisture out from the bottom of the concrete because the top of the concrete is waterproof with the paint. So you don't have to worry about the top. You just, you just don't want water coming in from the bottom and peeling the top layer of your paint off. Now where the two pieces of plastic are matching up together, sealing it with this tape right here that is waterproof as well and the adhesion on the other side the adhesive is waterproof as well so everything's going to be set and we've got about a one foot overlap underneath the two layers we've got rebar stretched out to keep the wind from taking this for a ride okay so it's a beautiful morning and we are out tying the rebar this is the next step for doing your sports court the right way. Rebar is important because it's literally the structure of the concrete. 
it's gonna tie all the concrete together so that there's no settling, cracking. It gives a lot of strength to the concrete for your sports court. Now, we're using half inch rebar on two foot centers. So that's quite a bit. The minimum is 30 inch centers. And we bumped it up to two inch, or sorry, 24 inch centers to ensure that this sports court lasts a long time. Cause that's what we're all about is building stuff that lasts a lifetime. Now the next important thing is you gotta elevate the rebar so it's off the ground and in the middle of the concrete so that everything is even and the same. Um, these saddles are pretty cool because they have two different depths and the use of those is if you're using a bigger bar, you can use the deeper one or depending on where the height of the rebar you want it to be, you can use it on the higher one or the deeper one. So that little thing is important to keep the rebar up when you pour it. So if you see here, we're waiting on the next truck, but we're laying out the concrete. And this concrete is a special kind of concrete. I, I doubt you'll be able to see it with my camera this morning, but if you look here closely, there's little hairs in this concrete. It's reinforced with fiberglass. So theoretically, when the concrete dries, those little fibers hold the concrete together even more. Micro, so it helps with like micro cracks. Gives the concrete a nice structure. So now after we've got it laid down, we're going to finish the edges. So everything's nice and smooth on the edge there, looking good. And then when it's ready, that's where we first started the pour. So it's a little bit harder than way over here. So over time, you're just gonna have to make your way this way. But we put a medium broom on this to give it some texture so that you're not slipping on your sports court when it rains or just even throughout the year. Right after we had poured that concrete, I was in the hospital with my wife having our first child. So I was unable to have anybody record the cutting of the lines process and why that's important. So we're just gonna fast forward to the finished product. Hey everybody, it's springtime and I'm back at the Ableton sports court that we got right here. And uh, I wanted to do a run through uh, of what it turned out like. Um, they're gonna be painting the lines here in the summertime. Um, but they've got the hoops up, the lights, and playing on it. And we've got, they've got the landscaping in. So uh, it looks a lot more finished than when we saw it when we were compacting all that uh, road base. Anyways, so let me show you. So we've got the pad here. I think this was a 35 by 55, if I remember right. But um, you can see, this looks good. We've got the Dominator basketball hoop, Dominator lights. I mean, this thing is lit up at night. You can play all night long. But the concrete really turned out great. Oh my goodness. Look at this. There's like no puddling, which is good. We like to see that. Um, it helps the paint last a lot longer. This is from all the snow this morning. Um, and it's melting everywhere. But um, this is awesome. If you're ever interested in one of these, we can definitely hook this up for you. Uh, now this sports court is done right without doing the post tension. So it's the best you can do without having to spend tons of money on post tension. This is gonna last forever, basically, without having to do post tension. If you don't know anything about post tension, it's basically where you can see the cut lines. Um, post tension makes it so you don't have to cut any lines. Um, and that just, the only benefit of that is if you really care about having a little tiny crack when you paint it. Um, but if you don't really care about that, it's not like a big deal. It's like a hairline crack. It's basically what happens after you paint it. But there's nothing wrong with the concrete. But post tension basically makes it so there's no nothing like that. But it's really expensive. So this is a huge um, benefit without having to do post tension. So. so I came to the nearest sports court to me that I knew was painted over cut lines. The reason why you cut lines in your concrete is to kind of control the cracks. So concrete is going to crack um, 
if you don't cut lines in it. And sometimes even if you do, if, you, if your lines aren't where they're supposed to be, they're gonna, it's gonna crack. So basically I wanted to show you on this sports court what it looks like when it's painted over those cracks. So as you can see here, it's just this hairline crack. Not bad at all. And this concrete pad was not done with fiberglass reinforcement or rebar. So it's literally just a concrete pad. And what you'll see, this is what it would look like if it was reinforced with fiberglass and rebar. Just a very, very small hairline crack. And even at that, it might look as best as this. You don't even notice it. Um, whereas without the rebar and the fiberglass, you're gonna see this. That's way too big of a crack. So by doing your sports court right, without having to do it post tension, um, you're gonna save a lot of money because post tension is crazy expensive. And the technology behind post tension is the fact that you don't need to cut the lines. So you don't even need any lines. When the concrete cures, you don't have to worry about it expanding because you can control it. You can literally tighten the concrete together so it can't crack. And if it did, you can crank it close the gap. So that technology is really advanced and very expensive, very expensive. You're gonna pay probably five times the amount than if you just did it the other way around. And I know that there's a certain cost. Obviously this client here, um, they were just doing a wedding and they just threw it together. Um, but they were not planning on doing a lifetime court because I, I guess they just want a new one later, I guess. But, um, so they didn't do any fiberglass or rebar. So at the end of the day, you're gonna pay a little bit more for that rebar and that fiberglass, but it's not that bad compared to post tension where you're gonna be spending out the wazoo. Um, but if that's worth it to you, yeah, we can totally do that. We can totally do that. No problem at all, nothing against it. I don't have any bias against it. You know, it's, it's just how much money you wanna spend. Um, both are gonna last a really long time. Um, like the method in this video, that's done right. And it's gonna last a long time, and all you're going to see is a little tiny crack. When you're playing, you might not even notice it. Everything worked out great with that job. Um, I wasn't there for the lines or the installation of the stuff, but I'm glad I was able to check in on it um, in the spring and to show you what it's gonna look like. Hopefully, um, since paint is actually more expensive than you think, it's anywhere between six and eight thousand to do that court. Um, so that's why the client's waiting, because they can still use it without lines. The lines are just nice. Thanks for tuning in on this video, and I'll catch you on the next one.